Yes, welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well. And thank you all once again for tuning in. Hope you're enjoying your day. First of all, go down, smash a like on the video. We've got some transfer news to talk about from reliable sources like Paul O'Keefe. Uh, so let's get into it. And we're going to be talking about, as you can tell by the thumbnail, we're going to be talking about Jota, um, who's currently playing his football in Saudi. Now, we've, we've done quite a few videos um, on Jota in um, the past, I want to say, couple of months, especially in the summer. We, we were all over it. Now, there was news that broke last night. Or it might have even been early hours this morning. Um, the last word on Spurs, big up to them. Uh, they put out um, at, well, bang on 12 a.m. And it says, Justin, I think they, meaning... Tottenham Hotspur, will go for Jota in January if a deal can be done. Now, obviously, Jota, as you can see right there, um, has played under Ange Postel, uh, Sorry, has played under Ange Postacoglu before um, at Celtic. Good player. I would be open to bringing him in. He can play on the left, can play on the right. Has played down the middle before. Has got goals in his game. Has got pace. He's a tricky customer. Um, and the best thing about it is. He could be coming on loan, and well, which I'm, which I'm open for. But not only that, he could be coming on a free, depending on the situation that is at hand um, with his situation in Saudi. Now he's fallen out of favour with uh, Nuno Espirito Santo, or it was Nuno Espirito Santo, I believe. He's been sacked now, um, and there was another report from um, Gary Jacob via Time Sport, and this come out. This is not actually that. Oh, this is only around. An hour old. Obviously, you're, you guys will see this um, Tuesday. And it says, Justin Tottenham Hotspur have stepped up their interest in Jota, who is available on loan in the new year. Jota is available on loan as he has been ineligible to play for our Etihad in the Saudi Pro League. And that comes out for Gary Jacob on the Time Sport. And I believe Gary Jacob was one of the guys who... Um, I think he was one of the guys who first reported the news um, of Bissouma joining um, Spurs from Brighton. Now, our Etihad are not on a great run of games. They're not on a great bit of form. They started the season extremely well, played 14 games, won seven, drawn four, lost three. Um, you know, they won their most recent game, then they drew, then they won, then they lost, then they lost, then they won, then they drew. And they won, and they drew, and then they lost. So it's very up and down, up and down, up and down. Very inconsistent. But let's talk um, about Jota. Now, Jota, obviously, predominantly is a winger. Now, the reason I want to talk about what he can bring to the team is because at the moment, I don't feel that our attack is clicking. And I'll go into a bit of detail in that in a couple of minutes. Um, but Jota himself is obviously a Portuguese um, Portuguese winger, I believe he's played for the national team as well. Twenty-four years of age, predominantly. Um, he's got well, he's got five goals in in eighteen appearances for, for Portugal. Um, he's predominantly left winger, can play on the right. Now, Ange Postecoglou apparently wants a left winger, a striker, and a centre back. Now, in terms of um, uh, in terms of Jota, his contract expires June thirtieth, twenty twenty six. He is both footed, uh, like I said, can play on the left, can play on the right. Um, is at a good age for us. He's uh, 24 years of age. He's won a few trophies with Ange as well, the Scottish League Cup, the Scottish League title. He did a treble under Postacoglu. Postacoglu knows him inside out and knows how to get the best out of him. He's already done that. But what I was about to say, I, I don't believe that our front three is clicking. Um, I think our best performance... In terms of, like, we created a lot of chances yesterday against Aston Villa. Let's not beat around the bush. Human Son has a hat trick of offside goals. Um, we had a chance, I think, in the first minute or first five minutes from your doggy. Um, Kulazewski hits the post. But I don't fear, I, like, Kulazewski played his best minutes in a Spurs shirt. For me, this season was yesterday. Um, and he was playing in this centre attacking midfield position. Brian Hill, for me personally, has got all the tricks and he's got the ability. But when he gets in the most important position, 
to play the ball in to either Son, Johnson or Kulu, you know, it's the final ball for me isn't at the level. Brennan Johnson got into a great position yesterday, should have squared it to Son for a tap in. We go 2 new up and instead he pulls it back to Brian Hill. Brian Hill doesn't strike the ball with his right foot, tries to take a touch. I think Kulazewski's best position until Madison gets fit again is playing in this attacking mid position. We had Benson Core as the six. Obviously, it's a big, big shame. He apparently um, suffered, a, well, he did suffer a knock. He went off. We'll find out, you know, how bad that's going to be in the coming days. But the midfield we played yesterday, I think, it shows that we can adapt our players into different positions. Benson Core playing the six, Gio played the eight. Kulu played in the 10. But the front three, for me, you know, it's worrying. It's extremely worrying. You know, in the last three games, we've scored three goals and conceded eight. Um, minus five goal difference. We've only scored over two goals this season once. You know, if we look at teams around us, We've been outscored by Aston Villa, Liverpool, Manchester City, Arsenal, Brighton. We've only scored two more goals than West Ham. Newcastle have scored more. At one point, we had a we had a goal difference of plus 20. Now it's at plus eight. Now, obviously, losing out to the likes of Romero and losing out to Van de Ven is obviously a huge part in that. But losing out in Madison, obviously, is just as big. But we're, we're creating chances. We're just not putting them away. And I don't know what, at the if Kulu's going to play in this 10 role to cover James Madison, I don't know right now what is our best front three. Because if you look at the team that played yesterday, Brennan Johnson looked burnt, completely burnt out after 30, 35, 40 minutes. Richarlison's injured. Human Son today. You know, if Richarlison, or yesterday, sorry, human son yesterday, if Richarlison has three offside goals, we'd be absolutely crucifying him. You know, I don't think Son was, was, was great yesterday. I think we are, we are in a little bit of trouble from our attack. You know, Aston Villa have scored six more. Liverpool have scored three more. Man City have scored eight more. Arsenal have scored two more. Newcastle have scored six more. Brighton have scored three more, you know, it, it's 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 a little bit concerning, you know. Burnley was, of course, we were absolutely clinical as can, you know, as can be. Fantastic finishing from Madison and Romero and a hat-trick from Son. I think our best performance collectively as a team was probably Arsenal away. Since Arsenal away, if you actually look at it and you really analyse it, Late goals against Liverpool, fantastic show of character. James Madison puts it in a dangerous area for Van de Ven. We beat Luton. James Madison puts it in a dangerous area against Crystal Palace. Um, and we get a, 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 um, a good finish from Human Son. Against Fulham, um, sorry, against Crystal Palace, James Madison puts it in a dangerous area. We get an own goal. And it's another good finish from Human Son. But if you look across Wolves, it's a tap in from uh, from Brendan Johnson, and, and it's a deflected goal against Villa. Other than Human Son, where are we going to score goals from? Like, where are we going to score goals from? James Madison's out, right? If you actually look at it right now, um, our top goal scorers this season, right? If you look at this, let, let, let's let's actually analyze this right now. Because this will kind of back up my point. Or well, it should back up my point. Human Son's got eight goals, one assist. James Madison's out injured. Richarlison's out injured. Romero suspended. So in terms of the players we've got fit, only Kulazewski has scored more than two goals. Kulazewski also has only had 11 shots. That's less than one a game. Less than one a game. James Madison has missed, has missed um, 
has missed Aston Villa and Wolves and still has double the amount of shots as Kulazewski. Richarlison, Papa Matasar has more sh- has two more shots than Dayan Kulazewski. Brennan Johnson has, has, has played something like five less games in Kulu and only has four less shots. I think I think like when you look at this and you analyze this data on your screen right now, right now, and then you look at a player we're being linked to, like the likes of Jota from um from Saudi, I think we're crying out for an attacker. We're absolutely crying out. When you look at his stats, uh, when you look at Jota's stats uh, in a Celtic shirt, in an out uh, um, our Etihad shirt, um, his numbers are actually relatively good. Celtic, 83 games played, 28 goals, 26 assists, over 50 goal contributions in 83 games. For our Etihad, he's only, only played eight games, and I think he's only started three of those. Um, Benfica's B team, nine goals, eight assists in 47. Benfica's first team, five goal contributions in 34. Um, two goals in the Champions League for Benfica and Celtic. Europa League, four goal contributions in five games for Celtic. Um, the Europa Youth League, his numbers are pretty good as well. 12 goal contributions in 17. Raul Valoid's probably his worst spell. 18 goals and 18 assists in 53, which is 36 goal contributions in 53. Um, Cobra Del Rey won game one goal. And I believe this is this is the only performances he's played this season because he's not registered for the um for the league. And he also played seven games in the Scottish FA Cup and got four goal contributions. Now, if you compare that once again, you know, they're they're better overall numbers than some of the players on this sheet that we've got fit. You know, Brian Hill is yet to score. I know he's only played a few, he's only barely played. Um but in terms of our goal scorers, in our top six goal scorers, Royale, Romero, like we've only got, in terms of players fit, like Royale, Lo Celso, Johnson, and Saar, you know, Papa Saar has got more shots than Kulazewski. I think that's mind-blowing. Kulazewski played his best football for me yesterday in this 10 role. If you can put Kulazewski in advanced eight, Madison as a 10, and either Basuma or Benson Core as the six, put Jota out on the left, Johnson out on the right, and Son for the middle, it gives us a different angle to attack from. I look at it right now. I'm I'm extreme, I'm concerned, guys. Um like I, I I I don't I don't like I look at it right now and think where where do what's our best option for January? Now we've got a video coming out about um about Lloyd Kelly as well, so make sure you do check that out. But we're not score we're not we're not as prolific as we were, you know, three months ago, two months ago. When we had obviously James Madison, I know that's a big factor in this. I just think it's a little bit concerning. We've got Manchester City on Sunday, which is an absolutely huge, huge, huge game. Um, let me know your thoughts down below. I thought it was an interesting topic. Would you take Jota in, in January? Make sure you like and subscribe. I'll see you all soon, people. I am.